The full scope of Russia's interference in the 2016 election remains unclear. A new book out today provides one account of Russia's assault on our democracy. It's called Russian Roulette, the inside story of Putin's war on America and the election of Donald Trump. It looks at Moscow's attack from many angles, including the Trump campaign, the Obama administration, and the independent investigators who warned about what was happening. It's written by Yahoo News Chief Investigative Correspondent Michael Isakoff and Mother Jones Washington Bureau Chief David Korn. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having yeah. us. Uh, David, let's start with the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, uh, they have found that the Russians were not interfering in the election and weren't out to help Donald Trump. Well, they have closed their investigation without conducting all the interviews that the Democrats wanted, without calling people back in for interviews, without subpoenaing a lot of information. And we've discovered just in the last day that we have things in our book, which kind of is our own version of, it, of the report, that they have not even bothered to look at. Um, and like what? Well, for instance, they did not talk to George Papadopoulos. In our book, we report, and remember, he was the Trump campaign aide who now has pled guilty to lying, who was trying to make contacts with Russians to set up a meeting between Trump and Putin, and then later on, just a back-channel communication. We've learned for this book, it's reported in the book for the first time, that he has told Mueller's investigators that Trump, as he believes it, encouraged him. He was at a meeting with Trump, and when he said, I could do this, I can set up something with, with Putin, Trump said to him, interesting go do it. Now, we don't know if that's the full truth, but we do know that the House Investigating Committee hasn't even bothered to talk to him. So how can they know what Trump's attitude was to these contacts between the campaign and Moscow? They don't even talk to the guy who was doing it. Yeah, but you say both about Papadopoulos, one of the great names, by the way, and Carter Page, not well known in this country, but they're very well known in, the, in Moscow because yeah. they're doing a lot of wheeling and dealing on Trump's behalf right. there. And, and, and it's pretty clear that um, once Papadopoulos, Carter Page became members of uh, Trump's foreign policy advisory team, that the Russians targeted them. Uh, Page gets invited to give a speech at Moscow. These mysterious Russian contacts, a professor and a woman described as Putin's niece, reach out to him in London and set up a meeting and inform him, this is Papadopoulos, that the Kremlin has dirt in the form of thousands of emails uh, on Hillary Clinton. Um, uh, so this was, it, it, when you look at the totality of it, it's clear that there was a penetration campaign by the Russians to get their hooks into the Trump campaign, that the Trump, that they were targeted. And Trump sort of dismissed all of this, was oblivious to it, and... Um, it, it's been a mystery yeah. to some for some time about why Donald Trump has refused yeah. to criticize Vladimir Putin or say anything really negative about yeah. him. And in your book, you make it very clear why that is. He has been courting mm -hmm. Vladimir Putin, you say, since really December 2013. Well, he has always wanted to have a big tower with his name on it in Moscow. It goes back to 1987, actually. He spent decades trying to do this. He brought the Miss Universe pageant to Moscow in 2013 and praised Putin throughout that uh, at the same time while trying again to get a tower built. Really, Miss Universe was a, an excuse for him to get teamed up with a, a oligarch named Aris Aguilarov and build a tower. And then that project didn't go through. But in 2015, while he's running for president, he is running for president. He is the leading Republican in the pack. He has a secret deal, which he doesn't tell the public about, to try to build another tower again in Moscow with a former felon named Felix Sater. And while he's doing this, he's going on air on shows all across the country and praising Putin. Now, he knows right. you can't build a tower in Moscow without Putin's approval. So that's one reason but why... But then I think people could say, what does that have to do with our election? Okay, so he's trying to build a tower in Moscow. Because... Okay, he's wheeling and dealing. What has that got to do with our election? Because the people he was trying to do business in Moscow were the same people who were meddling in our election and trying to sow discord and, according to the U.S. intelligence community, um, uh, tilt the scale in favor of Donald Trump. So it's hard to divorce those two uh, events going on virtually simultaneously. Go ahead. Uh, assess the Obama administration's handling of yeah. this. Did they drop the ball here? I, look, that is something we delve into deeply in the book. And we have a lot of new information about 
um, what was going on inside the Obama White House to try to counter what the Russians were doing. And there were people on the White House staff, the, the, the chief cyber uh, policy coordinator, who were trying to develop aggressive options to, to uh, go after the Russians, to uh, counter what they were doing, cyber attacks on Russian news sites, uh, exposing information about Putin's corruption and wealth. And they get told by Susan Rice, the national security advisor, to stand down, knock it off. You don't, we don't want to box the president in. Because? And, uh, because, they, because the president was not prepared to go there. He was worried that too aggressive a response would escalate, create a cyber war with the Russians, and could actually, in some ways, blow up the election, could uh, create more chaos and therefore serve Putin's needs. The problem is that the people on the White House staff were saying, no, if you don't respond in real time, if you don't punch back when you've been hit, um, you know, it's sending a signal to the other side. There was, that they can it was keep President doing Obama's what they were doing. reluctance. But, no, yes. no, 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 well, it was President Obama's But there was reluctance. a real strong debate. And in that debate, James Clapper, who's the director of national intelligence, said, if we get into this sort of cyber tit-for-tat, Russia could conceivably shut down our electric grid. We are more wired and plugged in and dependent on cyber uh, infrastructure than Russia. So there were some real concerns that if you took this step, it might indeed make things worse. I mean, it's really my favorite chapter of the book because it's sort of like, what would you do, John Dickerson? If you were in this, you know, would you yeah. attack back? Would you protect the election? What would you do? I think, you know, it, you know each side believes they took the right approach, uh, obviously, but I think it's fascinating from a policy perspective. Well, there's lots more to read in the book. Yes. Thank you guys for giving a, a preview here. Well, thank you. Yeah, you? Michael Iskoff well, and David Korn. Cool. The name of the book is called Russian Roulette, and it's on sale now.